so let's look at the memory snapshot. So what we did is we kind of looked at the idea of, you know, how do we verify that one segment is related to another? The, the, it kind of comes down to this whole notion of this image ID. What we want to be able to do is say that segment one, uh, segment two expects to start with the same image ID. I'll go back to this one. Uh, so if we say that A and B are both image IDs, what we want to do is prove that when segment two starts, we expect the starting image ID to be whatever the result of segment one was, and it's going to produce a new image ID, in which case, you know, we want to make sure that um, we're always going from A to B, to B to C, to C to D, D to E. Uh, and so what is the image ID? It's basically the root hash of a Merkle tree. And that Merkle tree is made up of all of the hashes of pages in memory. So what we did is we kind of looked at, we kind of borrowed some sort of like operating system technology where, you know, they have this concept of a page, which is essentially a sort of, if you take all your memory and split it up into chunks, you know, call it a page, one kilobyte is the size that we're currently using. Um, then what we do is we can we can hash do a hash of that page that becomes an entry in the page table. The root the leaf nodes in the Merkle tree um, are all sort of the entry you know hash entries for all of the pages in memory. Now there's this funny thing that happens. Uh, eventually, there's kind of this overlap where we build this Merkle tree with it's not a binary Merkle tree. We, we sort of, the arity is pretty large. It's like however, however many entries, however many hashes that you can fit into a single page, that's the arity of this Merkle tree. Um, so there's this kind of overlap that happens. If you imagine the page table starts with all just the user memory, but eventually the first, you know, the, the, the beginning of the page table itself is actually inside the, 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 the page table also. So eventually at the very end of the page, this, this page table, you end up having sort of a root page, which is sort of the, the summary of all the other previous pages and the final hash, you know, if we take that final root page and we hash it, we finally get this image ID. And that basically tells us, you know, that it's basically an efficient way to represent, you know, the verification of an entire memory image which is at the, currently it's about 192 megabytes. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what an image ID is. So I guess I'll stop there for a second and see if yeah, there's questions or I can try to explain that a little better. <laughs> hey, I'm curious. Uh if you can necessarily do this segmenting on all programs or if it's just programs where like you could parallelize it and later instructions aren't dependent on earlier instructions. Mm. So yeah, there's there's a concept of instruction level parallelism. There's different kinds of parallelism. Um, in our case, you know, we only support like a single thread of execution. Uh, we, there's only like a single context, a single core you can kind of think of uh, that the circuit implements. And so we don't yet have the ability to run multiple cores or multiple threads of execution at the same time. Um, and so uh, what, what really what we're looking at is parallelism for the proving, not necessarily parallelism for the execution, right? So the execution is all serial. Um, there's sort of this dependency. Now your, your compiler may decide to reorder instructions or do do whatever it thinks is best in order to achieve um, better serial performance. Uh, and, and currently we don't have any sort of vectorized instructions. So we don't even get instruction level parallelism either. Um, that would require sort of, yeah, vectorized instructions to be supported, which, which we don't yet do. Maybe that's something we'll do in the future, but it's, it's pretty complex. Um, it, would, it, would, it would cause the constraints to go up quite a bit for the pr proving system. So um, we're kind of, we, we picked RISC five because, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty challenging to kind of get all the constraints to run um, feasibly, right? So if we pick a if we pick a more complex instruction set, uh, 
the constraints go up quite a bit. So, so yeah, I don't know. That, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, let me check. So it's not that like you couldn't do this on Fibonacci, for example. It's that you do all of the segments and then your verification of them uh, is what you do in parallel and you get some scale bonus from this. Yeah, so the pro the proving is the part that gets is the most expensive, um, and that's the part that we can parallelize. So the idea is that you know running, you can take any program you want as long as it's a risk five uh, program. Um, we can execute that entire program with however many cycles it takes. It may take millions and millions of cycles, uh, billions of cycles. In fact, we can go through and run run all of those cycles and record all of the memory transactions that are going to occur. Uh, across that entire execution. So that's kind of the serial part. But that part we can run pretty fast because um, we aren't doing all, any proving. We're just purely emulating the actual risk v architecture. We could, in fact, even run, we could even run the execution on a real piece of hardware if we wanted to, um, provided that we had this sort of introspection. We could, we could watch all of the memory transactions going by. But it is possible in theory to basically run the execution phase in real hardware so it goes really fast. Um, but then doing the proving, you know, we can basically split transparently. We can just basically decide where the splits need to go and inject some overhead. There's like page ins and page outs. There's basically whenever a piece of memory is accessed, we need to do this page in operation, which is basically go and on demand. Uh, when a piece of memory is accessed, go and hash the page that that, that that piece of memory comes from. And then, you know, we, we're going to do this sort of tree of hashing. We're going to do that. It's kind of like an inclusion proof where we, we hash up the tree through the Merkle tree uh, and verify that the image ID is the one that the user has selected. So this is kind of on the read side. And then on the right side, when we go to write out the final page, um, you know, there's there's also this page out kind of overhead. So for every segment, there's like extra cycles that we inject in order to perform this like memory verification. But other than that, like the user doesn't really need to see sort of where the splits are happening. It just happens automatically. Um, and so yeah, any program should be capable of doing that. And the parallelism you get is uh, from the most expensive part, which is the the proving, uh, constructing a proof. For a given segment that's that's the part we can parallelize thank you that's very helpful